we can be traumatized to associate being ourselves with being bad, meaning to be ourselves feels like we are being bad. It feels like we are being dumb, we are being unworthy, we are being selfish, we are being aggressive, we feel paranoia, we feel fear, we feel anxiety. This can happen when we are trying to relax because relaxation takes place into the self. Like you relax into yourself. But it can also happen when we are trying to assert ourselves, assert ourselves onto ourselves, like stand up for yourself to yourself, gain some self-mastery, go towards your goals, or learn to open up a little bit, relax, something like this. Or when we're asserting ourselves onto the world, we can experience this anxiety, this anger, this paranoia, this uh, so on and so forth. This especially happens, this traumatic association especially happens throughout our formative years, zero to six, because we're completely dependent. We are helpless in this world without our caretakers. So when the caretakers, when the people we are dependent on, big people, when they abuse us, there's no other interpretation to make about the violent experience or the difficult experience other than something is wrong with us. There can't be something wrong with our caretaker because we are completely dependent on them. We're not capable of entertaining the idea that something is wrong with them or that's how people work. We don't have that understanding because we depend on them for our survival. What's wrong can't be with them. It needs to be in our control. We need to be capable of making an adaptation in order to secure our survival. This is like animal instinct stuff. Our survival is threatened. We have to be able to do something about it. And so if we are being abused just merely for being ourselves, right? It's not like a justified punishment or something like this. The only conclusion we can make is that we are worthy of it. So if we are worthy of it, how are we going to adapt to secure our survival? Stop being ourselves. Myself is the thing that brought on the abuse. Myself is the thing that's wrong. That's why the violence is happening. That's why the pain is occurring. That's why something is wrong here. Let me stop being myself. So now being myself has been associated with being bad. Later in life, because of this association, if you want to be yourself, you're going to experience that sense of badness, that terror. It could be terror, that anxiety, all of the things I mentioned earlier, that paranoia, that fright, that anger. You're going to experience all of these things on the way to being yourself because being yourself is all blocked off with these negative, with these bad, the sense of badness. This is why it's called shadow work, like making unconscious stuff, making all of the stuff that you repressed in order to survive when you were young, making all of that stuff conscious. Growing as an individual is not like all fun and joyous and rainbows and unicorns. First of all, growth necessitates loss. When you move positions, you lose the position that you currently had. And even if this position turns out to be a stronger one, it's not like you know it for sure. You go through your own life um, to some extent blindfolded. Nobody's ever lived your life before. Nobody's ever grown through you before. You're doing this for the first time. So we just don't always know what direction is best and how things are going to go and how things are supposed to be, so on and so forth. So growth already necessitates loss. But then if we are, if being ourselves and ourselves is the only thing that can actually grow. So if you want to grow, you have to become yourself. And if you want to become yourself, then you're going to experience the badness that you were conditioned to associate with being yourself. Hypothetically, we might say, what if um, you could just cognitively pull these association, this association apart? So if being myself is associated with being bad, now that I know it, I can just stop feeling bad about being myself. But 
you didn't learn it at a thinking level. You learned it at a feeling level or you learned it at an experiential level, which means you will actually experience the sense of being badness on the way to being yourself, which is why when you attempt to make steps to relax into yourself or to stand up for yourself or to answer the thing that you're called to do, which is a strange phrase to use. It's too vague. When you try to relax into yourself or you try to assert yourself again over yourself or out into the world, that's why you experience like, am I being bad? Is this off limits? Is this allowed? Now you're older. So one, you're not completely dependent on uh, anybody. No, no single person is performing every function for you. So now you have independence, you can break away when, um, like now the only interpretation isn't that you are bad. It could be that like life's not fair. It could be that the other person is bad. It could be that the other person's having a bad day. It could be that that's how life is, so on and so forth. So now you can make other interpretations because of your lack of complete dependence. And now you're bigger and stronger. And you can defend yourself against incoming threats. You can provide for yourself to some extent. You can provide functions for yourself to some extent. You have other friends and other whatever to provide functions for you, um, so on and so forth. But all of this is to say that, well, I've already said it, like growth and becoming yourself, it isn't all joyous. To become yourself when you have associated being yourself with being bad means to become bad, but not to stay bad, not for the sake of staying bad, but for the sake of feeling, suffering the pain that you internalized so that it may leave you finally. Because as long as it's there, and as long as you resist it, and as long as you try not to be yourself and try not to experience it and try to avoid pain, you can't feel it through. You can't experience it out. So again, this is why it's called shadow, because it's like the dark side of yourself. And that's it's also why it's called work, shadow work, because it's difficult and it's painstaking and it's uh, painful. If you would like to schedule a free 30 to 45 minute sample session with me, if you're curious about life coaching, uh, message me on Instagram or email me at david at dying to live dot blog. You can check out my blog, check out my TikTok, check out my Instagram, and I'll talk to you next time.